All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the Drew and Fun L. <laughs> and take a look at the poll. So last week, I presented to you, the YouTube citizens, four Rockefeller albums as far as what album I should review this week. And the choices were Made by Memphis Bleak, Purple Haze by Cameron, The Becoming by Benny Siegel, and The Professional 2 by DJ Clue. And to be honest, I thought Purple Haze was going to win. I really did. But to my pleasant surprise, The Becoming won. And, you know, I, I, and I was hoping this, was, this would win, but I thought... Purple Haze will win because that was a really good album and that was the more popular album as far as like everything that I heard and I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about the becoming but nevertheless there you go Facebook it was a tie but on Twitter y'all really blew that joint up with the becoming so here it is the becoming so this is Benny Siegel's third album it was released under Dame Dad's music group on March 29 2005 so well, we can't necessarily say this is... Oh, wow, okay. I, I thought it was a Rockefeller album, but apparently, they ain't dad's music, whatever. But anywho, um, moving on. The album contains 15 songs, meaning I can only give y'all a top three, not a top five, which is a damn shame, by the way. It really is. It's really, really, I risk. I really, really risk I could have gave y'all a top five, but it's only 15 songs. None of them are skits. But it's only 15 songs. If there was like one more song, top five easily. But I can only do top three. Now, this album was completed right before Benny Siegel had to sub jail time rather in 2004. So this was recorded from 2003 up to 2004 and was released March 29, 2005. There you go. And again, it was recorded under De um, Dame Dad's music group and Def Jam. And there was a crap ton of producers involved with this album. The Neptunes, Heavy D, Buck Wild, DJ Scratch, Just Blaze, Bink, uh, D Dot, Ty Fight, uh, Ty Fif how you pronounce this? Ty Fifty, whatever, Bula, Chad Hamilton, Aqua, Ruggedness, Neckbone, Dame Daz, the executive producer, Benny Zing, Benny Siegel, rather, rather, oh my gosh, I can't talk today, my fault. Benny Siegel, uh, the other executive producer, Kareem Biggs Burke, the third executive producer. So, now, let's um get on with the tracks, rather. Now, there's 15 tracks. As I said, there was three singles off this album. I, I only, To be honest, I only thought there was one I, or two. Um, I think, let me see. If that, no, I thought there was one album, single off this album. But, anywho, the, the five songs. Um, the first song is called Fill In The Air featuring Melissa... Jimenez. Now, there's going to be a, a, a reoccurring theme going on here um, with these tracks. I, I want to see if y'all can catch on before I read off all 15 tracks. So, <laughs> it is actually kind of funny. It's actually kind of funny. All right, so let me go, let me go on. Um, track number two, I Can't Go On This Way, featuring, featuring Free Ray and Young Chris. Track number three is called One Shot Deal, featuring Rag Man. Track number four is called Gotta Have It, featuring Petty Crack and Trista. Track number five, Don't Stop, featuring Snoop Dogg. Track number six is Purple Rain, featuring Bum B. Track number seven is called Old Daddy, featuring Young Chris, followed by Change, featuring Melissa J and Rail. No, not me. There was an actual singer who was a part of Rockefeller named Rail. And I was like, really, though, when I first heard of this cat. Moving on, track number nine, Bread and Butter, featuring Grand Pooba. And Sada X. Wow, remember that guy? Track number 10, Lord Have Mercy. Track number 11, Flatline, featuring Petty Crack. Track number 12, Tales of a Hustler, part 2, featuring Orskino and Emilio Sparks. Track number 13, Look at Me Now, featuring Rail. Track number 14, It's On, featuring Jay Z. And the last track, Wanted, parentheses, On the Run, featuring Cameron. Did you pick up the reoccurring theme here? And the reoccurring theme here is this. With the exception of one track, Lord have mercy, that's why there was a pause there. Do you do you do you get right to the pause? Because that's the only track that Benny Siegel did by himself. Yes, 
every other track features somebody, whether they in state property, whether they Rockefeller, whoever, it doesn't matter. Every other track on this album features somebody with the exception, uh, with the exception rather, of track number 10. How crazy is that? Now, granted, this is his third album, so okay, he got some leeway. Leeway, he could do that. Jada Kiss, with his first album, Kiss the Game Goodbye, it had the similar theme. Just about every track on there features somebody. And that was his debut solo album. I'm like, God damn, wait a minute. <laughs> but let's get on with the singles. Well, there's really not much to talk about regarding the singles. I didn't get any information regarding the singles with the exception of the charts. Well, the first single is called Gotta Have It. And that one... Wait a minute. That one features somebody Gotta Have It. Oh, yeah. Featuring Petty Crack and Twister. And that one was as high as number 82, 82nd rather, on the hot RB hip hop singles and tracks. The next single is called Don't Stop. Now, y'all probably heard this one. There's a music video for this one. This one featuring Snoop Dogg. That one came out sometime in 2005. And that one was high as 67 on the hot RB hip hop singles and tracks. Then the third and final single is called Fill In Here. I didn't even know this was a single. Um, that one features, uh, yeah, that one features, that was the first track off this album, featuring Melissa Jimenez, and that one was as high as 55th on the hot R&B hip-hop singles and tracks. Now, the one thing I did forget to mention is the album itself, The Beat Coming, in 2015, was number three in the Billboard Top 200, and was number one in the top R&B hip-hop albums. So, yeah, there you go with that. Now, let me get on with my favorite tracks off of this album, starting from the bottom up. Gotta have it. It's a good track. It got twist on it. So you can't go wrong with that. But it's the worst track off of this album. Not saying that it's bad. Not saying that it's terrible. No. It was it's a good track, but it's not the best track off this album. It's not even close. It's the worst track off this album. Moving on. Oh Daddy featuring Young Chris was pretty good. Lord Have Mercy was good. Don't stop, obviously, with Snoop Dogg. Put it, that was dope right there. Running on the run featuring Cameron. That's pretty cool right there. It's on featuring Jay-Z. I mean, it's Jay-Z. Come on. But yet, it's in the middle of the pack. But yet, it was still a good album. One Shot Deal featuring Redman. Yeah, that one was on point right there. Bread and Butter featuring Grand Pooba and Sada X. That one was on point as well. Flatline featuring Petey Crack. That one of them joints I, I listen to this, to this very day. That's one got that. If I were to go, if I were to use an anime analogy to this, I would play this over a tense fight where the hero is trying to fight, but he's getting his ass whooped. That where I would put this track right in there, right there. I would use that track for that purpose right there. Purple Rain by Bum B. And this was a close one. It was between which one should be number five, Purple Rain or Look At Me Now. And I'm listening to him and I'm like, I had to think about it. I'm like, Purple Rain is dope as heck featuring Bun B. But look at me now. Ooh, that, that one right there again, using that anime analogy. Like, let's say, let me see, I'll try to set the perfect picture. Let's say the hero's allies, they all got whooped and they are about to get dealt with the final blow. All of a sudden, here comes the main hero, powered up, where he got a new transformation that he just walks into the scene like a G. With this serious look on his face and his music playing in the background. That's how that's the perfect scenario for that track that look at me now. I had to put that over Purple Rain, but I could not put that over Tales of a Hustler Part 2. That's the fourth best track off the entire album, dog. That mug is dope. That's the type of joint you want to listen to where you about to go out and get into a game war with another group or something, dog. That track is dope as heck. And um that track features Orsino and Emilio Sparks. And look at me now featuring, well, no, not me, but yeah, well. Now, let's get on with our top three. Unfortunately, not a top five, but a top three. Number three, Fill in the Air featuring Melissa Jimenez. And y- y'all know how I am with the mail out tracks, man. And this is one of those mail out tracks right there, dog. Like, man, I could just uh, chill and listen to that right there. Now, the second best track off this entire album, ironically, is the second track off this album. I can't go on this way featuring Free Ray and Young Chris. Join is out cold, man. The beat is really nice. Free Ray and Young Chris did their thing on this one, man. It's out cold, that's all I can say. But the best track off the entire album is Change featuring Melissa J and Rail. 
And like I said, though, about filling the air, the mellow out joints, you cannot get more mellow out than this. Change is dope as heck. If I were to li- hear this song, though, I would listen to it from start to finish. Just kick back in my bed and just chill. Just mellow out, though. It is that deep, man. You cannot hate on change, man, because the change going to come. Woo, man, that joint is on point. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's my top three. Again, unfortunately, not a top five, but a top three, nevertheless. Now, let's go with some professional ratings. Now, uh, there's also some quotes with the professional ratings. I ain't going to read them all. So, anywho, all music gave it four out of five stars. Entertainment Weekly gave it a B+. Hip Hop DX gave it four out of five stars. The LA Times gave it three out of four stars. Pitchfork Media gave it 8.5 out of 10. Rap Reviews gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Rolling Stones gave it three out of five stars. Stylist gave it a B plus. URB gave it a four out of five stars. And Vibe gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. Also, um, our music guy gave it four out of five stars. Um, New Music Express gave it four out of five stars. Let's see. Did I mention Stylist? Yes, I did mention Stylist, Entertainment Weekly, and Pitchfork. And this, in 2015, by Pitchfork Media, was number 32 in the top 50 albums of 2015. And also by Pitchfork Media, the first track off this album, uh, Fill in the Air, was listed as the 349th best song of the 2000s. So, yeah. There you go with that. And, oh, actually... Did I mention Metacritic? No, I did not. They gave it a 73 out of 100 based on 14 reviews. So a lot of positive, um, you know, feedback and reviews for this album. But what do I think about this album? Now, I reviewed the reason a while back, and I forgot what I said in that video and for which one was Beanie Siegel's best album. I heard the truth. I heard the reason. I heard the B coming. I heard the solution. The solution. I don't recall. I didn't. I don't think I heard the Broad Street Bully. I might have, and then I said, eh. And I certainly did not hear it this time. I heard some of his mixtapes, but we didn't talk about mix, his mixtape. We talk about his albums. Now, I'm looking at the numbers. The truth is in consideration because it sold the most out of all the Seagulls albums. It sold like uh, 695,000 copies, meaning it may go. Like, his first three albums may go. We could get that out the way right now. But yet, it was fifth in the U.S. charts and second on the U.S. Uh, top R.B. hip-hop albums charts. When I mean U.S. charts, I mean the Billboard 200. Um, the reason, on the other hand, was... It sold the second most... That was Benny Singo's um, second sold album. And that one was fifth on the Billboard Top 200 and number one in the top... R&B hip hop albums. The B coming though was third on the Billboard 200, higher than the other two. It actually, that's his highest he ever was uh, ranked in that chart, and it was also number one in the uh, top R&B hip hop albums, and also number one in the top rap albums. That's the only one of Seagull's albums to get that chart number one. That is, but yet it sold only 431,000 copies, less than the reason and the truth. So, it comes down to the reason and the B coming. And I have to go with the B coming as his best album. So, you know what that means? This is a five out of freaking five. So, yeah, this is one of those ones you should have in your collection. A physical copy of this album. You should have in your collection. I got it in my collection. And I also got the reason in my collection as well. But the B coming, you should definitely have in your collection. Five out of five, go out and buy a physical copy. Now. Go get it. Now. Now. Before I sign off, let me uh, give y'all the options for which albums I should do next week. What I mean by that is, y'all vote and I'll review. That's simple. And this time, we're going to focus on dynamic duos. And this is a doozy right here. So here's your options. We got Mad Villainy by Mad Villain, a.k.a. MF Doom and Mad Lib. Instant fire right there. But wait, it gets better. Train of Thought. Reflection Eternal. So this is Talia Kweli and, high, and DJ High Tech, rather. Again, instant fire right there. 
Also, we got Slum Village by Slum Village. Yes, the self-titled album right there. That one is fire as well. I already reviewed their uh, a Detroit, wait a minute, what they call Detroit Deli album, which was a classic right there. Slum Village by Slum Village. That one is instant fire as well. And of course, and this one was a tough one because obviously dynamic duos, I'm, you got to include my deep. But the problem is, which album? Now, I already reviewed Mother Music, which is in my opinion, their best album ever so it came out to hell on earth infamy and the infamous and after doing some digging i went with the infamous so yes um the infamous you yeah, probably wonder why did i went with the infamous because that one got that shook ones um track part one i think yeah i know part two is in there i think part one's in there as well it's been a minute but i know shook ones in there survival of the fittest is only a lot of their classic tracks that's not on uh, mother music that is it's on this album so that's why I went with this one over Hell on Earth and Infamy. So those are your four choices. Mad Villainy by Mad Villain. Train of Thought by Reflection Eternal. Slum Village by Slum Village. Yes, the self-title right there. And The Infamous by Mob D. So yeah, go ahead, vote now on my Twitter, on Facebook, and you will know the results next week as far as which dynamic duo of an album I should review for next week. So with all that out the way, man, y'all know who this is. This is the new Jay Gatsby, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith. Saying peace out, y'all. And I got a very important video Friday, a channel update. You do not want to miss that. I got a lot of important stuff to share with you, the YouTube citizens. So, yeah, man, with that said, peace out, y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. Oh!